What is up out there, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the, the official sports talk radio show on the Nickel City University. It's overtime, baby. And it's the fourth quarter. We're about to wrap up the show. Before we wrap up, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of negative uh, reaction to Bobby Jindal and what he did for the university. Uh, he and the Louisiana Louisiana's government felt it was necessary to invest in two nickels. Uh, they're putting forth $1.2 million uh, towards the fields around campus. Now, first of all, when people start talking about this, they think it's going to the state. It's not going to John L. Gidger, as much as I would love for that. It's not going there. So, do some research before you start talking about something you clearly know nothing about. Um, these one, this $1.2 million is going toward all the fields around campus, including the rec fields, the fields behind John L. Gidry. Uh, every field that is used at the Manning Camp, which is relatively every friggin' field on campus, um, that's what it's going toward. And the reason for that is because the Manning Passing Academy raises roughly $2 million for the community. So, in turn, you're still coming out positive. So, for a one-year $1.2 million investment, you're talking about an annual collection of $2 million for the community. And this camp is still growing. It has... It's still got plenty of room left to grow. It's got the Manning's name Wait, on it. How many years has it been going on? It, it, this was its eighth year in Thibodeau. It's been going on for, I believe, 18. And Nichols used to play host to the Saints training camp. Um, they would come stay on Nichols campus and practice uh, at Nichols. But due to the terrible field conditions we have here and the poor draining we have on our fields on campus, that stopped happening. So guess what? Nichols then lost instant revenue. Uh, so did the community. Then, now, the state, which other places have approached the Mannings about potentially moving their camp to other locations. Uh, some of those locations, I'm sure, have been some bigger schools. Um, I don't know exactly what the list consists of, but bottom line, they can move it anywhere they want. But they want to keep it in Thibodeau, so I think this was absolutely... It was fiscally responsible for this to happen. You're talking about a $2 million a year revenue and just a $1.2 million investment. Now, it's interesting because, you know, you got people complaining with, Oh, how do you pay all this money when my tuition... Eh, shut up about your tuition, number one. Because no one put a gun in your head and told you you had to go to school. Um, two, you know, especially for people at some of the lower ranked universities, um, smaller universities, if you will, you don't pay that much anyway. You know, you're complaining about your. I, I, I know at Nichols, I pay roughly. We pay about. If you live on campus. If you live on campus between 14 to 16 a year, maybe. That was an expensive living, too. Yeah, and that's where most of the money comes from. It's not tuition. It's on-campus living. Um, but, like I said, 14 to 16 a year, maybe? That's nothing. Uh, we're talking about private schools who pay double that, sometimes even triple that, a year. So, if you're going to complain then do something about it. Work more. Drop out. Do what you gotta do. But quit complaining. Quit blaming other people because you have to pay this money to get an education. Grow up. But, you know, you got all these people complaining. First of all, your tuition spike has nothing to do with the $1.2 that just got invested uh, into that field. 
Um, it's all state money. It's nothing to do with actual university's fees. Yeah, and you know something else people fail to realize is the state has a budget that's divided up into different sectors, if you will, and funding is to go towards schools, towards roads, towards whatever the case may be. It's divided up. Now this 1.2 million, again, it has nothing to do with your tuition increase. And, you know, like I said, I've been hearing a lot of people complain uh, about this whole issue. Well, first of all, people find anything and everything they can to complain about. We live in a one society where people just want, 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 want. They don't want to do anything. Um, and I think politicians, governors, and presidents get the short end of the stick. Granted, I don't necessarily agree with everything the government does, but at the end of the day, you're asking one man to be basically a puppet or a talking head for an entire system, for the entire governmental system, and when something goes wrong, that one person's to blame, and it's basically all pried off onto that particular person. Perfect example, Bobby Jindal, Barack Obama. Um, and, you know, people fail to realize, okay, number one, let's take a look at the president. He's asked to be the spokesperson for two and a half billion people. Um, Louisiana, I'm not even sure how many people we have in Louisiana, but it's a pretty, pretty large amount of people for one man to be the face of. Yeah. And people just want to complain. Now, granted, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with everything Bobby Jindal's done. I don't necessarily agree with anything any politician's done. But at the end of the day, let's put this into the most realistic approach you can pop, probably put it into, and that's the fact that when you're a politician, you're going to piss off some group of people somewhere along the line. Now, granted, you can say all you want. Oh, I'm a taxpayer. I have the right to play. Yeah, you do. But the relentless bashing is just ridiculous. People will find anything they can to complain about uh, politicians and what they do. And at the end of the day, you probably can't do a better job. That's what they were, that's what they're paid to do, that's what they're trained to do. And if it was that easy, then any average Joe would be able to do it, bottom line. So, in essence, I swear, the next time I hear someone complain about the $1.2 billion investment, I'm going to lose my damn mind. <laughs> Well, also, the thing is, people wonder why they have the camp at Nicholas Campus. Why I have the Manning Camp, this great camp where people come from all over the, the world. I mean, we have people from Canada come. And you have to kind of look at what we have to offer here. This is a college campus, meaning we have dorms and we have cafeteria food to house and feed these people, which, I mean, you can put them in hotels but where you're going to go practice because there's no fields. And Nichols is a college campus that has empty fields all over scattered. We have a giant empty field behind the football field, we have the rec fields, we have our practice field, we have random empty fields throughout the actual yeah, campus soccer so, I mean, dude, soccer you got them all over campus. Which is different than LSU and Tulane, where these places, sure, you could feed these people better, probably even house them better in places like LSU and Tulane and ULO, where you have a lot of things going on, but there's no, there's no where to practice there, there's no fields, there's nothing to do. Nichols is pretty much the most perfect place in the state for them to be, and that's why they're here. And these people are trying to drive the, the camp away by not having these fields fixed. I mean, soon enough, if the fields keep getting as bad as they are, they're not going to want to stay here anymore. We're losing a $2 million annual boost to the economy. Yeah, and, you know, as I said, they could take this anywhere they want. Now, another positive to having it here at Nichols, you're not going to have all the freaking media hoopla that you'll have at larger universities. Yeah. And I think that's a big reason they keep it here, because if, you, if you've if you ever been to the Manning Passing Academy, they don't talk to people. The Mannings are strictly business when they're there. They're trying to do everything they can to help out these kids who pay roughly $700. And after last year, knowing that they had to practice on a parking lot because of poor drainage, this only made sense. So they're not depriving the kids of some great knowledge and some great insight on the game of football. And as I said, you ever come down here for the Manning Passing Academy, you try to get an autograph, they're not going to do it. You try to get a picture, they may say yes, chances are, it's probably not going to happen. 
ends. They're strictly business. They want to keep it uh, sort of small but exclusive at the same time, um, or fairly large, excuse me, and somewhat exclusive. And they want to keep things to a business-oriented standpoint. Now, you do have the certain events like the Air and I, which you'll see a good portion of media at, but it's still not as large as it would be uh, as if it were at uh, the Saints training facility, at uh, LSU, at an Alabama, or at another premier school in college football who's a mainstay for many people. And at the end of the day, like I said, it's strictly business and for them to keep it here is a huge deal for all of you complaining grow up if you don't like your tuition spike it's not because of the manning camp and quit complaining about your tuition for your college education